welcome to session number 24 of Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. Stop yelling! Woo! <gasps> Lucky monster. My goodness! Here we are once again! Yeah. Last session was a doozy, wasn't it? <laughs> well, last session was special. I'm still falling down the stairs. <laughs> metaphorically. <laughs> No, the metaphorical stairs. I started climbing up metaphorically, but then Jason's metaphorical body <laughs> falling down knocked me back down. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm getting a lost in this metaphor. Uh, so, um, since there is still, since you guys are still recovering, perhaps the the recap is going to to help us out today. Helps things um, as I travel. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so normally, it would be Matt's turn, uh, but he's busy, like, celebrating his birthday or something crazy Ugh. like that. Which, I mean... Happy birthday, Matt! <laughs> Happy, birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, I'm not going to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he and Dennis swapped their their seats for the recap. So Matt did the last sessions, and Dennis uh, unknowingly uh, now has to bear the the burden of recapping last session. <laughs> um, and we've actually decided that, that we're all going to share that burden. Um, so we're going to begin with Dennis, and you can <clears throat> you can uh, take it from here. Just as a mental preparation, it also means to have a full recap. I'm assuming I'm also doing the summary for for this session next time. Uh no. Really? Yeah, because because cool. you're not uh, you're actually taking up a bit more. Uh, oh god. A bit more today. <laughs> uh, and uh, look, uh, there's the there's the environment. You can nice. put your oh. minis on it. <clears throat> wait, 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 oh, don't, yes. don't do it yet, don't do it yet. Oh, don't do it yet, don't okay. do it yet. Back to the, can you go back to the picture before? Yes, yes I can. Okay, uh. okay. Uh. Then I can start with the introduction to our recap. Y yes. <laughs> Alright, yeah. The introduction to the recap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's how you know the last session was big. <laughs> <laughs> the group, now named Animal Lover Brooke and the others, decided to... <laughs> Travel west to find the dreamer tree that Taker had heard about. During a short rest, the group opens Jamil's book to find out that new information has appeared, mainly about tieflings. At the end of the paragraph, Jamil also wrote that no more tieflings will be born, because he has ended the curse. This upsets Taker greatly, since he believes that this, that, that isn't a curse. He then proceeds to write the wrongs in Jamil's notes. Tieflings will be born forevermore. There is no curse. The group proceeds to walk west while slowly falling asleep and dozing off. Upon waking up, the five are below the dreamer tree. They are being greeted by different animals. An Ugrin for Pip, a cat for Pontifex, a horse for Talix, a black panther for Rook, and Ollie's and Pagolin for Tekka. Squeak is in a cage. O dot O. <laughs> Did you just say O oh, dot O oh, out loud? <laughs> yeah, I didn't write that in the notes. So. <laughs> Gotta be thorough. <laughs> On top of that, a kid elf tiefling with light pink skin color <laughs> named This appears from the leaves of the tree. He's apparently the person helping us visit our dreams. One by one, the group follows their animals to, their, to see their dreams. <clears throat> You can now go to the next ah. picture you just showed. Now I, now I set the scene. The group is on their way back to Simli Alon, taking their rest around the campfire. It is a late evening. They've all seen a lot and need to process. Brooke starts the conversation. <sighs> I think we should talk about what we just experienced, right? He glances at Pip. I can start off, if that's fine with everyone. Go for it. Mm. Okay. <laughs> oh, fire. I need to... Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, fire. Oh. <sighs> Before I start going into my dream, all of you, 
or most of you know by now that I have served in the war for the Moonwatch. I was young, naive, and foolish. And honestly, none of you except Pontifex could even come close to understand what that time was like. If you wanted to survive, if you wanted to be free, you fought in the war for said freedom. I'm not proud of what I did, but I deemed it necessary at that point in life. But in the end, I was not a protector. I was a murderer. I turned wives into widows, made fathers bury their own sons and daughters, and I robbed children of their parents. Brooke pauses for a second to look at Pip with regret in his eyes. Either way, Telic, Telic, since you don't remember, I woke up with a black panther next to me. My dream started with us seeing six fearbolts sitting around a campfire at night, one of them being me in younger years. After a while, that image vanished, and the Black Panther sat down in the same place as the book next to me in the image. And then we kind of talked. But yeah, the people you saw in my dream was actually my squad. These are the people I can be thankful to for surviving the war. From left to right around the campfire, you saw Leo, Leah, our leader, myself. Oh, shit. Son of a bicycle. What is happening? Oh. <laughs> it scared me uh, so bad. Our DM was assaulting us. <clears throat> okay, let me do that again. Yes. From left to right, you see Leo, Leah, our leader, myself, Sunny, Ray, who was Leo's brother, and Nicola. Telix, I told you this the other night, but what we basically did was infiltrate the enemy lines, assassinate important people, and guard transports and important people on our side. These people you saw there are... Ooh, I lost the notes. Oh, these people are or were like family to me. The war eventually ended, but in return for peace, the Jade Alliance wanted the head of a higher, from up, of a higher up from our side since we caused so much damage. The gnomes, who originally hired us in return for protection of our country, denied any allegiance of us. So the Frillbox higher-ups decided to sacrifice our own squadron leader, Leah. All of us obviously, obviously were against that, but Leah knew that this was a sacrifice she had to give. In order to protect our people... Oh. This was a sacrifice she had to give in order to protect our people. Leo, on the left, who was in love with Leah, decided that he didn't want to live without her, so he took his own life on the same day Leah was sacrificed. I was able to convince Sunny to leave Olympia, since I didn't want to stay in a country that I risked my life for, just for it to turn on us once we weren't needed anymore. Niccolo and Ray stayed back. I haven't seen them since. We lived in a settlement in Ilianarden for a few years, helped them rebuild before we heard the news about Ladaria. We saved up our money and came over here to start a new life. Over here, in Simlilong, we once again helped where we could, until we heard of the Phantom Guard. And, well, yeah. Um, I obviously can't be certain with everything that happened in the dream. But every, after everything that this said, and after I've, what I've seen about the Black Panther, I think that the Panther was Sunny. He then rummages through his backpack till he finds the ale bottle he received from Cass. So yeah, I'm sorry for annoying you all with war stories. If anyone wants, I can share this ale. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. What what happened with Sonny? Uh, Brook waits for a second, opens his mouth, but then close it again. Um, this is something I can't really tell you about. If I could, I would, but I can't. Oh.
Anyone want some ale? <laughs> Pip reaches sure. his hand out. Uh, he gives the ale to Telix. <laughs> Telix will pour a very small amount for Pip. A responsible amount. <laughs> <laughs> And how does it taste? That's good. You got Where'd you say it was from? Um, I actually got it from Simli Alon. Like, oh. When I met a friend, uh, he gave me that bottle. <laughs> I don't think he'll be, he's still in Simli Alon when we get back, but if he is, maybe we'll get the chance to meet him. Sorry for what happened with you, Brooke. But was it a, a good dream or a bad dream, do you think? Oh, the one I had? Yeah. It was a really good dream. That's why I sang this. It's, it's good memories that we saw there. Like... The times we actually spent together and everything we've been through, those five people there, during that point, they were like family. And us basically surviving through many years, through the entire war, and sharing those moments together, is something I can never forget. There's always something different once you've saved someone's life and they have done the same for you. It gives you like some kind of safety when you're traveling with them. Brook, was your fight <laughs> for something? Are your people free? For something. I mean... Originally, Elimia wasn't really part of the war. We weren't... I think we were one of the last to actually join the Moonwatch Alliance. So... The problem was that while we were neutral and trying to stay out of the war, our country was located right in between both borders of the Jade Alliance and the Moonwatch. So no matter what, the country or the war was still happening on our grounds. And since the war was mainly about the kind of magic we used or people used, or is that at least being the reasons that sparked it all? Us being on the arcane side definitely didn't make the Jade Alliance hold back when they were fighting on our lands. So I thought I was fighting for the freedom and for the protection of our people, which in the end we did manage to do, right? The war is over, Alimir still exists, what else can you want? Um. Talos is just going to take a big swig of ale and. Well, but from, from what the professor told me, I think you were next. How are you feeling after all? Well, I know it wasn't the most pleasant thing, though I don't remember everything that happened. Pip just sort of uncomfortably shifts uh, where he sits and um, starts nervously uh, grasping at 
the cloth around his neck before he pulls it up over his face and Squeak uh, crawls up as a rat on Pip's shoulder and then you hear Pip's voice come out of it. The the Ukrin. It was sort of my guide animal and well it it jumped out of my arms and led me straight into a forest and I knew where I was right away. All the trees were familiar. It's home. I I looked past the trees and I saw Lita and I heard the ocean waves crashing against the docks and and then I saw I saw mom and dad. It was dark, but I knew it was them. And and they were carrying me, but I don't remember any of this. They were running, so I ran after them. Mom kept holding something in the moonlight. It, it was the rock, it, you know, the one with all the painted circles on it. She kept watching the rings on it and as their colors changed, she kept moving, like she was using it to try and find where she was going, which was the ocean. They got to the ocean, and my dad yelled out to the ocean, saying that we did everything you asked. And then, and then big snake tails came out of the water and dragged them in, my mom and dad. They, they didn't leave me after all. They, they were taken. They, they were taken by this thing. It came out of the water and I saw it. Big, gray, huge teeth and its bottom half was like a snake that split in half. And it's, it's eye. One single vertical eye. What was that thing? <laughs> that thing is called a Magdragach. I don't know what your parents were doing or thinking, but they somehow got themselves tangled up with an archdevil. I mean, not even my dad, Squikashtarak Sr., is as high up as one of those. An... an archdevil? Maybe... maybe you can talk to it. Get it to give me my parents back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You really don't realize how, how low down I am on the totem pole, do you? Big devil like that? If I talk to one of those, they just eat me and use my bones as toothpicks. But it didn't hurt me. It grabbed me out of the water and brought me back home. It laid me down in bed. How was I sleeping the whole time? And... And when I woke up, when I woke up, that was the day my parents were missing. And then, Granny. Yeah, your Granny seemed pretty upset, Pip. Yeah, I was happy to see her at first when she showed up in person after the dream. I mean, she was really there in the flesh, but the ingredients I've gotten for her so far weren't enough. I haven't been collecting them fast enough, and she needs them really badly, so that's why, that, that's why she, she had to punish me. She took my rock away, my parents' magic rock. I need to do better so that I can get it back. I, I can't keep letting Granny down. Why exactly isn't your granny collecting these things herself? I, I don't know. She's, she's really old, and and she can't, she can't leave the house as easily as I can. I guess. I mean, do you know why? Hmm. <clears throat> Cause she might be old, but. Seeing, I'm assuming at least that it was magic she did. She doesn't seem weak. No, she's, she's a very powerful witch. She, she taught me pretty much everything I know. Hmm. 
there might be a different reason. Uh, Pep. Let's... I think we can all agree. We should help Pip with his quest. Or at least you'll have my help. I'll get you whatever you need. Thank you. I'm okay with helping you, but... <clears throat> when I... When I looked at your dream and she appeared, what I felt was proper anger for her once you didn't, well, once you didn't have what she wanted, like proper, proper anger. And I don't think, like I'm no parent or I don't have grandsons or granddaughters. But I don't think that's how you're supposed to feel towards your family, right? It's not her fault. I mean, how long have I been gone from home? How long have we been on the road? Pip, you're a 12-year-old kid. We've been on the road for weeks, and all I've gotten for her are a few seeds? <sighs> I need to go faster. Squeak, how much do you know about this? Oh, uh, well, uh, I, uh, same as Pip, is, uh, I'm contracted, uh, bound to serve, uh, Granny and bound to serve Pip. Um, so, uh, you could say she's like a boss to me. What is Pip to you? Also uh, your boss? Co-worker. Mm-mm. <laughs> I think, uh, after we get whatever it is she needs, we should all maybe try to meet her granny. It's a long way back home. And we're gonna keep going further, aren't we? That's true. How, how are you getting these back to her? Or you're not going to leave us, are you, Pip? Um, I don't... No, no. <laughs> See, I've got something for that. And Squeak holds out uh, this little pouch. Says, Anything he gets for Granny, we can put it right in here and it'll find its way to her. Anything? Anything? What else do you need, Pip? Um. Uh, well, there are a couple of things I need to get. Um, but she doesn't tell me everything right away. It's like I have to finish one thing at a time. So, uh, I'll. How, how about this? I'll let you know when I get the next batch. Well. Do you know what you're looking for next? Yeah, I actually I have a pretty good idea of where I can find it, so... I think I it? can get it back when we're in the city. What is it? Oh, um, it's, uh... It's a rusted knife. And... And... A coin with a with the symbol of a duck on it. <laughs> a duck. Mm hmm. Well, I don't think I've heard of anything like that. But if you know where to get it, then I guess I guess we'll be fine. But again, any, any help you need, just let me know. Do you know what happens once <clears throat> you brought her everything? Are you getting rid of... And I point at my own neck. These things? With every... With every 
ingredient I get her. With every batch of ingredients, another knot will be unraveled. And when they're all unraveled, then I'll be able to, to, to use my voice again. My own voice. And, and that'll be good. How many knots are left? Five. Oof. Oof. All more reason to get back to Simile Lawn, right? Well, and it's... Tomorrow, I think, is Deliverance, right? Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely want to be back tomorrow. I th Del deliver what? <laughs> the end of the war. Oh. Anniversary. One of the happiest holidays for all people. It was actually Tekka's dream that was before mine. And yeah, uh, Tekka so had the first dream. So I was I was actually really uh, really excited for my dream because I thought it would be happy because of Tekka's. But it wasn't. <laughs> That was my error. Saka, <laughs> I think your dream might be a little less straightforward to go over. <laughs> Should we go? Should we go on Discord? <laughs> <laughs> Let's. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Austin's still... Wait, what? Oh, no. What? Nothing. <laughs> What's Discord? <laughs> so, Tekka will take out his small pouch of uh, bee balm powder from the flower he ground up, and he will kind of dash it over the, the campfire uh, between all of us. And he tells everyone... Let the flame guide you. Follow the smoke up to the sky. And... See if that <gasps> works. Every so scene. this will have music, by the way. Okay. Uh, and Tekka will speak as some imagery flashes in your minds. Some of you may not see all of it. It might look different in your heads, but we'll see. One moment. Uh, okay. Ah, ah, come back. Come back Changing to me. Sources. Yeah. It's just, oh god, I'm stuck on like seeing <laughs> Sid's avatar and I can't swap to the actual thing. Uh, how do I bring it up? Uh, it should just be a black screen if you see. Yeah, no, it's, it's I'm screen. just stuck on like, there we go. Okay. And full screen. All right, we got uh, it. Okay, yeah. So quick word of warning. Uh, this might not time up as exactly, but I'll try my best. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. You're good, you're good. Oceans take memories like sand. Stars convince my eyes to close. The dream tree appears after a blink of darkness. Embraced in something familiar. My friend, Ali, no longer linked to her ground. The journal no longer chained to us. 
we walk through sun and snow and sand. An endless sea holds a city with life. They could well be my mother's family, building and playing and living in beautiful reds and blues, wearing hoods unlike any I've seen, neighboring animals of the wind. Someone major covers the sun's gaze, blind yet seen, mute yet meaning, freed of the ground yet trails it. Their cold grace wakes me. They await my return. A path leads to my place in the land. Mother, she traveled until she could no longer. Her will strong, she would not tell me, even with my childish mind hurting her heart. But holding their hand filled me with hope and longing. Then we returned to the tree. Oh my god! What? <laughs> what the hell? You did do a short movie! That is amazing! <laughs> that was so amazing! It looks so good! <laughs> Holy crap! What the hell? Sam. How did you do that in a week? Oh my god! <laughs> it's so like... Wow! It was so like the composition, the movement, oh. <laughs> the color, the character design. <laughs> Sad. Can we give him Giga inspiration? I was thinking that he's getting double oh. for this. Oh. I am speechless. We have to say that forever. That's amazing. Oh my god. Oh, I'm just speechless. Dude, I wanna, I wanna play your video games. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, big credit to um, the book Piranesi. Magic realism really inspired uh, that little movie there. It was really nice. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Well done. <laughs> wow. I. Incredible. That was that was really incredible. I'm like I'm just so proud to be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Sid is so cool. <laughs> Sid is so cool. Sid really is so cool. Oh. Damn. Okay. I I I just need a moment to recover. Whew. Damn. All right, that was that was really cool. That was that was really really cool. I am sure you have questions. I myself do not have answers, but I know my goal, my journey now. But they will wait. We have things to do. Ah. Uh. Oh. Um, do you know what uh, happened to your mother? My mother lives home with my father. We have lived happily for long, but what I've been seeking, I could not stay. I felt a longing, and this affirmed my belief. I know there is something more. And I only regret that you could not have an experience like it. So I will fight for you so that you can have the same. Thank you. <sighs> so 
are going to Lita, going to your place. That's quite a walk. <laughs> it will be long, so let us do what we can on this peninsula before we move further. Because I will not wish to look back with regret. That why you were looking for dreams? Dreams have always been my connection, her. And it has given me feeling of a place far away, away from home. That is how I knew there was something more for me. So I will let dreams continue guide and continue to hold its power in high regard. It's important to have that. Something that gives you hope and helps you move forward. But even if some of us don't dream or mainly have bad dreams hold on to those so that's what's guiding you i believe you were all given your dream for a reason even when it hurts it will guide you And Brook just nods and then takes another sip of the ale. Would Talix like to share what has yeah. been shared with him? <clears throat> um. Wait, one second, I need to turn off my dryer. Uh -uh. <laughs> I've been beeping the entire time. <laughs> oh <Okay>. no! <clears throat> the rest of his laundry. <laughs> Brooke runs oh, into without, the tent. Without actually getting into it yet. I think uh, during all the talk about the importance of dreams, Talos is kind of uh, been looking down and drinking more uh, heartily from his ale. Mm. Touchy subject. Come back. It has been turned I've... off. Someone Yay. envy that of you, Tenko. Oh, well, at least now I have people here who can help me. You know, when there's something I need to know, they can deliver the message. Right Even for that. when you forget it, you have experienced it. Something remains with you. Yeah, I hope so. Maybe it's something I can... I can learn. As for what we went through... Between what... What's written in... Well, the book... And what the professor wrote for me... Ah... <sighs> It's... it's so strange. It's all... It's all something very different from... just very disconnected. But I guess, uh... Go over it. Well, my animal was, uh... 
You wouldn't know. She wasn't just a horse, she was probably the first animal I ever really befriended. Uh, her name was Moonbeam. She, uh, she was a horse that belonged to our, our lordship. <laughs> But, uh, I got to meet her, and, uh, even got to ride her once. She... she couldn't be alive anymore. It's been too long. Mm. I don't know if that was really her, or just... I don't know. Something from my own head? I mean, this did say that wherever we were, when we were in that dreamland, it could be visited by people who are alive or dead. So it yeah. could have been her. Well, so she led me to that, to a river, it says. And I saw some sort of vision, but it wasn't meant to be mine. That's what Viz said. But we saw... What we saw there, that was the high branches of Akhenoth. We saw... the wyvern. The god. Flat and metal. And machinery. And he was speaking to someone. It looked like he was speaking to us, but it wasn't. It was from the eyes of someone else. Maybe another god. And they were speaking of the fox in all likelihood. It seemed like maybe maybe someone was asking the wyvern to kill the fox. The wyvern said that I hated the fox, but the fox was their friend. But it wasn't really clear what their answer was to the question. I guess that's all we got from the vision before Viz took it away and moved on to something else. But obviously that opens so many questions for what happened with the fox in the first place. Could it really have been the other gods that killed it? Or did someone else speak to the wyvern? What we saw next was still connected. It was somewhere, it had to be somewhere in Ladaria. But it was snowy, and there was a wooden cabin. And we saw to Vidalcan and Jamiel and his Unan companion, the, the wool dog, and my father. I regret that I can't remember. Must have been great to see his face again. I know he's been here. Well, he's been here ever since I left home. But I've heard so, so little from him ever since he's come to Ladaria. I just know that he was working on something that he was excited for, and he had to go somewhere deep in the continent, somewhere, somewhere further than our maps go. And apparently he's working with Jamiel. That's something I never knew. So... Jamiel was speaking mostly, and he mentioned some names. Things like the Krelko and the Sildun. That they were speaking to a dragon at some point. Apparently they'd gone to all these people just so Jamiel could convince my father to go along with some plan of his. I guess it was Jamiel's idea for the seed to be brought here and planted. I thought I was doing it for the Jade Council, this doesn't make any sense, but... Samuel somehow got the seed, or got permission to get the seed from the fox. 
And I guess I'm part of that too. And I guess this is all done to... to make sure that Ladaria doesn't... doesn't crumble into chaos like so many fear that, that it will. Gulborgok did mention at least that much to me. But all of this is new. Clear that I've been kept in the dark about a lot of things. My own father is involved, and somehow I never even knew. Why can't he leave here? Why can't... Why couldn't he have told me any of this? I don't know. I've been reading this over and over, and... I still can't really make heads or tails of it. It just, it just opens up so many new questions. I don't really have any answers. But, uh... Well, it does make me sure that... Even more sure that we need to speak... I need to speak... To Barianthar. And get... Any clue... As to what the Jade Council's... Take on any of this is. Because now it seems more sure that they really had no part in this. Somehow this was Janiel's idea. So who am I really working for here? I have to know. So... You've made your mind up that you want to... talk to the Jade Council. I'm not keeping it hidden. Right? Did I understand that correctly? I'm not going to mention the seed to them. Pontifex's dream was... seemed pretty clear on that. But I do need to ask... I do need to try to figure out what they know. And I don't think I can find that out without... speaking to Bari and Thar. I actually agree if what we saw or what we heard in the dream is correct and that without the seed that Ladaria will crumble will crumble into the sea of chaos, then the seed is a huge burden. And with the little information we have, I am I mean this is not my decision to make, right? You have been entrusted. But I feel like with this little information, it's really hard to make the right decision. I, uh, whenever we get back in town, we need to find out where that Silver Claw organization, where they are. We need some lead on where my father is. He's the only one that seemed to have a different perspective. I need to find out why. But I think there's a good chance we're all headed in the same general direction. Tekka, I, I think at least you and I might be going to a similar place. Hmm. Maybe you a bit further, but we said we passed through the snow on the way to your home, right? Mm. You are right. And Talix, you have right. We should stay together. Uh, Brooke, before I meet with anyone, I, I do want to give you the seat again. Of course. As long as we're sticking together. I... I just don't have enough faith that, uh... that if something were to happen, I'd be the one that could stop them from getting their hands on it. Okay. One 
question. Is it common for the people of Plurna to trade with your gods? I have never heard such things here in Ladari. To trade? I... My impression of this fox, they would not give the seat easily. The fox values knowledge above all else, but the fox is also supposed to know basically everything. Except maybe knowledge of Ladaria? Claiming. That is something that Chamuel might be able to give. And after all, when I feel like when a god gives you the power, especially magical power, right? A divine power, divine magic, they only give it to you when they expect you to work or to at least do things that align with their goals, right? So that could be seen as some kind of a trait as well. So I think it's, in the broader sense, at least pretty common. I'm not completely sure one way or the other that Jamil's magic was divine in nature. I also have one more question, Telix. What's that? If there ever comes a time where your and my opinion differ on what to do with the seed, do you want me to just give it back to you, since it is yours? Or how do we handle that? We yeah, will make that decision as a group first. And if that's still not enough, then we'll seek out more perspectives. What if the situation needs immediately to be solved, or needs an immediate action? I guess we just have to trust ourselves in the moment. But above all else, let's protect the seed and keep it secret, like we were told to do. That at least we know the gods want us to do. As this conversation begins to die down, uh, Pontifex will offer to describe uh, his part of the dream to the rest of you. Um... So, he recounts the events he witnessed with exceptional clarity. And whenever he's unsure about the detail, all he has to do is check his notes to promptly find what he was missing. He tells you of a house unknown to him, yet familiar. Shelves filled with books he has never read, research that has never seen the light of day. In the center of the room, two figures, the same couple that had appeared in Talix's own dream, not a day older or a day younger. An, unex an unexplainable contradiction. The, con the contents of this vision should have taken place well over 300 years before Talix's, and yet there they were, the same to Vidalkin. From the conversation, it was clear that they were distraught. They mentioned some kind of forbidden knowledge, Something that could destroy the mind, the spirit, and the heart were it ever to be discovered. They mentioned Pontifex's name, as he produced from a box a pyramid-shaped gemstone. The one a Pontifex right now is holding in his hands as he describes the scene. In another room, the couple picked up their infant child. The father held the gemstone before him and spoke words that Pontifex refuses to repeat out loud at his time, but he allows Talix to read them from his notes. The words are, 
I wish to know what the universe is made of. Based on what his parents said, he postulates that the words are a passcode of sorts, a magical key uh, that, or a spell that will activate his gemstone and lead him not only to his long-lost parents, but also to whatever terrible secret they have discovered. Pontifex concludes the tale by describing how his mother seemed to almost feel a presence and almost hear his voice, and attempted to banish the perceived intruder through a magic spell. The same thing that actually happened at the end of Talix's dream as well. Now you're free to discuss among yourselves, but of course I'm not going to, vo to voice Pontifex's uh, <laughs> opinions on anything. Yeah. It must be... <clears throat> Must be quite some powerful magic that uh, what could keep them looking so, or keep them so young for so long. <laughs> I suppose maybe it's something shared by even my own. Father. Oh, I didn't expect us to all be so connected. Isn't the universe made of rocks? <laughs> well, that's about a quarter of it. Well, I guess some people say there's more to it than that. Than the elements. But, uh... I don't know, that's for the astronomers. How did you and Pontifex meet? <laughs> Through my father. Uh, they, uh, my father and the professor here, they... They were sort of research partners for a while. My father isn't particularly old for an elf. Uh, I think he's even younger than the professor here. But, uh... Yeah, they... Uh, they had similar areas of interest. I suppose, though most of what I've learned of my father's research with the professor was news to me. I thought he mostly researched nature and all the same sorts of things that that I was interested in, but it seems like his uh, his areas of interest changed a bit in recent years. Anyways, uh, after I left home, I tried to live with my father, but he was going away to Ladaria. And you and couldn't so come with him? No. He, uh, he, he told me to go find the professor. I mean, mostly I stayed with the church either way, but uh, it was still interesting to learn so much from Mew, Professor. I'm, uh... I'm a lot more well-studied now. Maybe I can finally help my father. Maybe I'm ready to finally meet him here. Things you're will be all, different this time. Uh, you're all beginning to feel the tiredness. Uh, um, apparently, if 
the if you're a journalist to be believed uh, you actually haven't eaten in in days um, and you don't feel hungry you you proceed to proceed to remove one of your rations from your inventory <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and as you're eating uh, Pontifex points out that uh, there is one final thing that uh, warrants some discussion as he opens the book yeah. the one you have been uh, the one you have called Jamuel this entire time um, to the last few pages where the last sentence written with its ink uh, is uh, I am Orm you could feel the confusion uh, the terror almost uh, through uh, through the otherwise emotionless pages uh, um, the large font and a slightly slanted sentence uh, um, unusual from the usually calm and very well organized book and as Pontifex holds the book open um, no more words appear on its pages He's still there. Samuel? In form? You wait. And nothing happens. The book used to, to always greet you with uh, excitement, uh, always happy to have a conversation and try to answer questions, although uh, it couldn't often answer, uh, provide information. Very... Um, very often he would just comment that he uh, didn't know something or he didn't remember something, but this time there's just nothing. I... I don't get it. Didn't... didn't the book say before that... that he didn't like the Metal Man and that the Metal Man was... was... was Orm and that he didn't like him, but then... but now... He's saying he is Orm? It is not unnatural for people to not like themselves. Not, hap not being happy with the actions they have taken. And maybe, even though he didn't remember at that point, deep inside he knew whatever he did wasn't okay. Or at least not to, not to up to the standards he has now. But nobody can tell us except for Orm himself. And I poke the book. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> you poke the book, Pontifex shakes it a little bit. Uh, the book is silent. Okay, that's dumb. Maybe we just give it time. But... Whatever the case, we would like to hear your story when you're ready, Orm. There is still no reply from the book. If this is not Jamuel, why was this Orm in her? That is question. Jamuel spoke of him like he was her rival, but they must have been traveling together. Or has Orm been in the book the whole time? So much, so much information. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by gonna, now it has gonna, become, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm ah. gonna be honest. When I went or decided to go to Ladaria, I was hoping to not be involved in these big in, um, 
decisions anymore. But I don't think splitting up is an option. So we're all kind of stuck, right? I know it's only been a little bit, but either we plan it now or on the way tomorrow, similarly alone. But uh, the most efficient, we should make a plan on what to do once we arrive there. It'll be deliverance. We should relax. Really? And, um, uh, Talix, considering the distance between Simlielon and Aria, and the efficiency of the Warpoint service, uh, and the fact that you sent uh, that uh, letter, uh, apparently, a few days ago, um, you think there is a good chance that perhaps, uh, perhaps either tomorrow, or perhaps the day after, the Baryon Thar might, assuming he accepts your invitation, uh, be there? Oh. I did not schedule things terrifically well. <laughs> huh. I might have double booked. Hmm. Byron saw it was a deliverance day. Pretty sure we can skip that for one year. So that is more important, <laughs> right? We'll now, see. Pontifex just slams the book sh uh, shut and uh, uh, secures it under his his pillow, and recommends that we sleep over uh, all these questions and revelations. <sighs> it climbs on the tree. <laughs> I'm okay to take the first watch. I will go second. Just wake me up whenever. <laughs> I'm Pontifex is last. Okay. I still have your rolls from last time. Oh yeah. Those wonderful rolls. <laughs> 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 That's right, I forgot about that. <laughs> Brooks, Watch, and uh, Tekka's uh, pass without any interruptions. Nothing disturbs you. And, um, and it Talix's is, does also. It is during uh, <laughs> Talix's time to be awake that uh, um, we're going to move on to something uh, slightly different. <gasps> what? Uh, <laughs> uh, Tekka, you slept a little bit, you were wo woken up by Brooke, and then uh, uh, you went right back to sleep. And, and to you, uh, sleep has always, has always come easily. You're, uh, tonight you're not quite sure what you dream about. Uh, most dreams are fleeting for the majority of people, and... Uh, all you have left is a vague memory of chasing after a dream version of Oli, not a winged one, but one that can swim through water um, faster than you can catch up to it. And then there's, um, there's this moment when, you, when your mind snaps into focus, seemingly out of nowhere, and you look around and at first you think you might be awake as you find yourself lying near the campfire, but soon you notice that some things are a little off. Your companions are gone, as is Oli, and you stand up, but there is a weird heaviness to your limbs, as if you were moving underwater. Your surroundings are familiar, yet slightly off. The color of the tree you're sleeping under, the height of the grass, even the sound of the wind, everything feels a little different. You now have a term for this. You've learned it uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, dream walking. The phenomenon of being awake in the world of dreams. And then, as you turn around, you see them. The same humanoid creature from the dream that the pink tree had granted you. 
the enormous the enormous being leans forward the hand extended towards your head like they did previously but they do not touch you yet um hovering their fingers mere inches from you lost one tonight we visit you there are others who wish to meet you and i have brought them here but first I will cover your, cover your eyes. You must not see all of us at once, or it will harm you. They pause, as if awaiting for your permission. Tekka looks up to the eye sockets and down to his feet, and closes his eyes and nods. With your eyes closed and now covered by a cold set of fingers, <clears throat> you never rely on your ears only. You hear no footsteps, and yet soon you're surrounded by a small number of other voices. They speak amongst themselves in a language you don't understand, but you still recognize it. There have been times in your life when your mother said words you couldn't grasp, in moments of frustration or excitement, when she would inadvertently fall back on her native tongue. It's a language that sounds like the flow of a gentle river in spring. You can't see them, but you feel their presence. The weight of their existence feels overwhelming and your soul is left gasping for air. That one familiar voice you know reaches your mind once more. Last we spoke, your dream was not only your own, but tonight, your friends are not listening. I have words for you alone, lost one. Please, speak. First, a question. Has she ever spoken of us? No. There is a um, slight sense of dissatisfaction that kind of washes over you and it feels like it's not coming from you. Uh, were you about to say something else? I could feel something. A connection. But never direct. Distance means little to us. But sometimes travel far enough. And your roots weaken and wither. If you know not of us, then an introduction is in order. We are the exalted ones. I am Tekka. Lost one. Your mother robbed you of your destiny before you were even born. Why am I not with you. Why? Was I taken? Here. Your mother made an unwise decision, dictated by fear and ignorance. 
But you don't have to pay for her mistakes. You can fix it. By what road, by which method, I will do it. I will right the wrongs. We trust that your feet will take you back to us. You now know the way. All that's left to do is to walk it. We have a request. Then speak it. You know of other gods. Those who come from the world across the seas. We have sensed them. Our invitation is extended to them as well. Bring them to us. Let us meet. I know not how to reach them, but I will not stand still. I will work for your request to be fulfilled. You carry strong love. We know you to be a resource. You will find a way. We have faith in you. I will not lose you. Then we shall wait in the heart of Ulaiza. Until then, when we can finally speak face face. You feel the hand leave your forehead, your eyes free to open, and whenever you decide to do so, you will be awake. And so is the rest of the party. You take a long rest. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Mm -hmm. It's fine. God, bye. bye. Your gods want the seed, don't they? <laughs> Why is everyone being controlled by someone big and creepy? <laughs> Excuse me? Granny's not that big. <laughs> the professor is creepy? not creepy either. <laughs> uh, the professor is big and creepy. Maybe not for me, but for a lot of other people. <sighs> All right, take your minis back. All right. I refuse. Oh, well. <laughs> Just I, kidding. Say goodbye to Talix. I, mean, I guess that's fine. Lost to the void. Oh. Well, <laughs> I should have been thinking about spells. <laughs> <laughs> I um, prepared mine. <laughs> <laughs> I should definitely prepare ceremony. <gasps> Who are we marrying? I don't know, it just feels like mm. it's a holiday. I need my coming of age. <laughs> oh, <bonus>. yeah. <laughs> I guess it is supposed to be like a specific thing. When is the next birthday of any of you? Uh, scroll, scroll, scroll. Scroll, scroll, scroll. What? Where is anyone's birthday? Oh, Brooke's birthday. Oh, it's months from now. I was about to say, are oh, we yeah, all there's born like in the three, same month? Yeah, there's three of you in the same month. Where is Talix's? It's a couple months after that. Cute. We'll never get and there. And then Pekka's. <laughs> All right.
right. You did remove your rations from the previous day? I yeah. did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um... Cool. You resume traveling, yeah? Um... I think we're, we're good with conversations around the campfire? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yep. Okay. Um, there comes a moment uh, when uh, you actually remember passing through this stretch of landscape. Uh, everything leading up to the tree is a little blurred and confusing, and uh, it's already... Um, Fading away from your, from your minds, it feels like water through your fingers, memories you just can't quite seem to hold on to. But uh, finally you pass a threshold beyond which you're like, yes, we, we did come through here. And you know you're close to Simlielon, you, uh, you should be there soon. And uh, finally, sometime in the early afternoon, you see Simlielon's flying towers in the distance. Um, you're... <laughs> the threshold of remembrance. <laughs> mm. um, you almost speed up w without even realizing, just slightly, um, rushing through the farms, past the sign that warns of danger, and approach the city. Uh, today... Oh, oh, oh god, it's really hard to do this while also talking. <laughs> uh, today is... Uh, the Day of Deliverance, the single most important holiday of the year for the Plurinan people. It is a celebration of the Day of Rebirth, when Bakanath returned to life in the year 1105 and ended the war between the Moon Watch and the Jade Alliance. Forty-eight years later, you smile with the knowledge that the world is at peace and that you are living through a new and exciting chapter of history far from Plurna in an unfamiliar, wonderful land. The city is adorned with colorful pennants, the streets are covered in flower petals, and everything is ready for the celebrations. Everything is ready and completely, utterly silent. The closer you get, the more of them you see. Dozens and dozens of bodies lying on the ground. Everyone who should be dancing and singing, eating and drinking, celebrating peace and life now lives motionless, like fallen leaves. And we're going to take a small break. Oh, what? <laughs> Are you serious? So you can prepare your spells. What? Um, They're just sleeping. Oh, right? I, I should have them prepared for from this morning. So yeah, I but I'm... I'm that we were getting into anything. Right, well... Yeah, don't use that. <laughs> they're, they're just sleeping, right? All these elves, they're sleeping? What yeah. the heck? Why can't we have a normal day, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what happened uh, to those days? <laughs> <laughs> Who's at fault for this, huh? <laughs> we got... uh, I just I very need to um, use the bathroom. Uh, but why don't I leave you with this track? What right. the heck is this? I'll see you in 10 minutes. Okay. Oh. Echoes of life. <laughs> Bye. Well, wait, how are we going to find the duck coin if there's no market? Everyone's just sleeping. Chess goes for that. That makes it actually markets. probably a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> wait. I was about you were to not say, suggesting <laughs> this. Is... this... This actually works out very well for me. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> we have turned down grave robbing once. It can't be the same. Oh, you, notoriously, you can only turn down things once. Yep. Okay. Everyone knows you just have to ask a second time. I don't know. Where is Pip going to find a coin with a duck on it, though? That's so specific and totally actually what he's looking for. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just a very specific item. And deduction uh, and their deduction skills say that if someone describes something describes something as very specific, <laughs> he's a liar. Are you a liar, Pip? Let's see. I'm cheating. I've got meta knowledge. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. 
Uh, <laughs> resuming where we left off. Hmm. You have just reached a Simlielon. What would you like to do? Okay, so whenever you say bodies, could you please elaborate? Uh, Brook, uh, to you, um, <laughs> this immediately brings back flashes of the war. Um, you haven't seen a scene like this ever, ever since. But then notably, <clears throat> um, you immediately notice a lack of blood, a lack of signs of violence. Um, as all of you frozen at first for a couple of seconds and then you rush forward, you all see that uh, uh, none of these people appear to be hurt. Okay, everyone come together. Pip. So Alex is just going to the first body and I would probably him hold him back pulls. before you can oh. leave. You're gonna hold Talix back? Yeah. We don't know what we have in front of us here. Stick together. I, I need to find out. I need to help Yeah, wait. We do this together. Tekka, take out your stuff. Prepare any spells you have. Pip, stay close. Keep on the lookout, and then what's, we go together to the first buddy. What's going on? Are they are they dead? What's? You think someone's attacking us? What what is this? I'm not sure, but there's blood missing, so chances are they might not be dead. All right, together. Uh, Talis, you approach one of the bodies, but closely followed by the rest of the group. Uh, roll a medicine check. Oh, by the way, I forgot to give everyone their inspiration. Oh, right. Uh, there's Dennis's, Austin's, Jason's, Sid's. Thank you. And Sid's second one, <laughs> which yes. you can give to, to someone else since you're, you're filled up. Ah, uh, let's see. I think Talix will have. Oh, it's for it, for the medicine check. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it just I don't know if I reminded me here. during the break. Um, oh yeah, sixteen total. Okay. Um, apparent to uh, pretty much everyone as soon as you approach and you like flip over uh, the body of an elf, um, he groans slightly. Uh, he's breathing. He's uh, uh, certainly not dead. Uh, almost feels like he's sleeping, but of course, it is an elf. Um, they are physically incapable of sleep. So even it's uh, by magic. even by magic, by by any right. means. Uh, it's just like something that their bodies cannot do. Um, so this feels more like an unconscious person, and uh, um, as you as touch. His forehead, and you uh, you check his breathing. Um, his heartbeat and and the the the, uh, the rhythm of his breaths are both really low. It, it, his temperature also feels a little higher than normal. It feels like uh, something has uh, just drained this person of all energy and. Um, if you were to see this in any other circumstance, you'd say that this person needs to be uh, immediately uh, taken somewhere uh, and and be uh, be taken care of by by somebody with your experience. But you just look around, and all these people look like they require medical attention. You wouldn't even know where to start. What is the telex? Uh, okay, I'm going to. With the spell slot, cast Detect Poison and Disease, so it's fast, and I'm going to just look at this person and then all around. It's like a 30-foot radius around. Oh, it's in a radius? Okay. Yeah, around me. Um, all right. Uh, you use your magic to let uh, Vakanath guide you towards... Uh, um, Hopefully, uh, some answers and perhaps even some solutions to what has transpired here. And curiously, yeah, this person is right at your feet. They're not sick. They're not poisoned either. <sighs> you move around and 
some of the people you pass, some of the uh, the elves in particular, some of them carry some sickness to them. Um, as you were afraid, uh, there is some... Uh, uh, you can sense the rotting cough uh, developing in some of them, but it feels unrelated. It shouldn't cause anything like this. I think this is the work of some sort of magic. Uh, professor, do you know anything about this? I think Brooke will also cast Detect Magic. Oh, yeah, you can do that. Okay. Uh, Pontifex has never seen anything like this. Um, never in his years in Plurina has he uh, seen or read about uh, anything similar. Um, Brooke, you cast Detect Magic? Mm hmm. <clears throat> 30 feet radius. Up to 10 minutes on myself. Okay. Um. Whoop, oh, oh, whoop, oh, I didn't mean to zoom in on here. I'm trying to scroll in my browser. I have absolutely misspelled detect magic. Here we go. <laughs> so, out of curiosity. A faint aura around any vis visible creature or object in the area that bears magic. Can penetrate most barriers, but is blocked by one foot of stone, one inch of common metal. Okay. Uh, Brooke. Your spell at first um, brings back no results. You don't really feel the presence of magic anywhere, besides uh, uh, some of the decorations that are scattered around town. Uh, apparently, there is magic lights that are currently off, but uh, um, can, um, you, you've seen elves do this before. So they're sort of like these these uh, candles that can be lit with a snapping of fingers, and they never, uh, they never run out. And you can sense the magic here and there, uh, even in the pendants uh, that apparently are made to, to glow for the celebrations. Uh, but not on the bo on the bodies. At least at first. It takes a few seconds, but then you begin to perceive something. It's not coming from the bodies. These people are not affected by magic. But something inside of them is. You detect faint traces of enchantment magic. Inside of them? Yeah. You, you can tell that this effect is not upon them. They are not affected by it. And all of them have it? Yes. All of them have it. <clears throat> and then as you look around, you notice that you're picking up trace amounts of this same magic from your companions, too. And from yourself. In much, much smaller amounts. It, like, almost takes you a minute before you feel it within the party. But it's there. Um... Uh, Talix, I... your... Your cure wounds, um... Can you roll for the hit points? Okay. Uh, the first person that you had reached, the first one you had examined, uh, you have concluded that there, there are no injuries upon them, but uh, something must be done. And you know they can't do this for all of them, but uh, perhaps you can get started at least. You put your faith in Vakanath, uh, and you call upon her name to heal this man, and he coughs. He opens his eyes, gasps for air, bringing his hands up to his neck. Uh, he looks like he's struggling to breathe. Uh, Oh. 
That's it. <clears throat> so he's just sitting there gasping. Oh uh, yeah. Can you can you speak? Uh, uh, I yes, uh, barely. Is it over? What happened here? I don't know. I, I can't breathe. It's there's something in the air. He looks around, eyes wide in shock as he sees everyone else besides the group, uh, unconscious on the ground. You have to leave. <coughs> you have to leave, it's going to get to you too. He's right. If anyone has some clothes, cover your mouth. Because he immediately does so. so. I'll because take a marshal and wrap it around my face. I try to see if there's some magic around them, or some magic inflicting them. And not really, but inside them is some kind of enchantment magic. And it's inside us too, just smaller, so... Make sure you right, don't... Is there any way you can tell where it's coming from? Is there any way? Yeah, Bro Brooke, well, you look around and take a few steps, you don't... Uh, your magic only reaches so far. But as you're looking around, carefully stepping down the road and uh, avoiding the bodies littering it, then the wind shifts, and a breeze blows through your clothes. And then you sense it. Magic floating through the air. It's like a wall of it that washes over you in a moment. And then it's gone. Sort of like a wave crashing on the shore. It was in the air, it was everywhere. For just a moment. I can't say from where it's coming, but it's being delivered through the air. I guess wherever the wind is heading, that's where the magic is heading as well. If we leave these people, are they... They're... There's no way we can get everyone out of town. What can we do? Well, help with a few. Get out of town for a bit. See if they can recover. They didn't Brooke. seem like they were dying, right? Like they were... Um, You imagine that if this doesn't kill them, they would probably eventually just die from from thirst and hunger. They don't have a lot of time left. Oh. Uh, and Brooke, you're the person who is currently like the furthest uh, down the road because you were just trying to to sense uh, um, where this where this magic is coming from, and you see some movement further up behind one of the buildings, uh, just a shadow that disappeared behind a corner. How far away? Uh, perhaps about 100 feet. Um, no, more like uh, 150. Someone is here. 150 feet in that direction. And I point where I saw the shadows. Do we run or do we follow? We follow. All right, keep your mouse closed. Keep your mouse covered. I've got it. Yeah, like I said, I've, I've got my soul around my head. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, Talix is going to go ahead and get out his staff and his uh, shield as well. Is there any sort of wildlife in this area? And if there are, are they on the ground too? Um. Like, I imagine there would have been at least birds in the towers when this happened. Uh, yeah. And the can you roll a perception check? Sure thing. Okay, well, the tenth is enough uh, um, to actually just hear faint barking in the distance, the chirping of birds. Uh, you look around and it actually takes a moment before you spot any, but sure, there's uh, there's uh, some birds that fly overhead at some point. It doesn't seem to be affecting the animals. Is Do we see... So for all the bodies we see on the ground, 
Are all of them elves? No, there is uh, some others, uh, um, and they seem to roughly match the the uh, the distribution of the population of Simulianon. Mainly elves, some gnomes, some humans. Okay. Uh, at a glance, it doesn't look to you like there is a um, any particular species of humanoid uh, that mm, seems to be more prevalent than the others. Besides, in in the way that uh, the population of the city is. We gotta go towards towards that. Is that also where the wind's coming from? I'd assume so, right, Windsor? Um. I will ask for a perception check from anyone. Uh, make it survival, actually. Wind, yeah. Survival. For anyone that's, Suck, that's trying to figure it out. Sucks on pinky and holds it up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Inspiration. Oof. Rip. Another natural one oh, for damage. Oh, it escaped! Okay, so, uh, 17. When you just received this one. Thank you, Sid. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, 17. Ah, uh, okay. You don't feel a correlation between the direction of the wind and the direction that Brooke uh, uh, pointed towards. Um, today is... Uh, it's a reasonably windy day, but uh, the wind is shifting every once in a while. It's coming mainly from the north and occasionally from more like the um, the northeast. Um, and right now you're moving towards the east. It's uh, it's it could be, but it, it doesn't feel like that's it. Okay. Whatever, Talix is running <clears throat> that way. Yeah, Brooke is also sprinting that way. Mm-hmm. Okay, you're all running towards where mm. Brook saw some movement. Um, okay, uh, you make it uh, roughly like over here. Um, when Brook sees something again further down the road, and you keep on chasing, uh, and it's feeling like you're uh, whatever it is, is you're you're catching up. You're running faster than uh, they are. Um, until you fi finally, as you tur turn around this corner, uh, you just hear this, this uh, uh, voice calling out to you, saying, You guys really shouldn't be here! Sounds like a gnome. A uh, feminine gnome voice. Of course. <laughs> Can do I you know what's around? going on? Do you have anything to do with this? Well, I don't have anything to do with this. Then let's talk! Ah. And then, uh, you see from behind one of these buildings a scrawny, almost emaciated gnome uh, popping up from behind cover, rifle in hand. She stands there, proud and steely-eyed, her dark green hair waving in the wind like leafy branches, staring at you from behind her turned-up nose. What kind of people sees what's going on in this city and just decides to waltz in? You want to die? I want it's to help these people. Well, Do you if have you any want idea to... what this is? No, and if you want to help, I think the best way to do it would be to go get some help. Can I inside check her? Uh, sure. Cool. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> the two Dennis extremes. Balance is restored. <laughs> um, okay, so back to when Talix asked uh, if she has anything to do with this. So, um, her kind of shocked, almost offended reply felt very genuine, very instinctive. Um, like that defensive, but in a way, like, how could you even consider that? Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, you don't really detect. It, it doesn't feel like she's trying to deceive you. Um, her attempts to send you away felt actually kind of uh, protective. 
Is her <clears throat> mouth and nose covered? No. Whatever this is, it's in the air. You should cover your face. Ah, uh, in the air? Okay, uh, f fine, sure. And it's magical in nature. This might... Someone might be doing this intentionally. Um, as she'll, um, she, she very carefully, she's still, is still at a good many uh, uh, dozens of feet away from you. Uh, as she'll put the rifle on the ground, but just watching you carefully as she does so. Um, and then put on her backpack and look for, she pulls out a piece of cloth that she then rips. Um, and she produces just a strip of cloth from it and she ties it around her face. Um, and she's kind of, kind of annoyed that she has to do this. Um, and then very quickly puts the backpack back on one of her shoulders and uh, gets uh, the rifle in hand again. So what are you doing in here? Uh, well, originally I just came here with my patrol and it was supposed to be a simple thing, stay a couple days, continue east, but, well, now they're all out. Ah, so I suppose I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Have you checked any of the higher towers? No, does it look to you like I can fly? I'm on it. <laughs> um... Does, does Squeak turn invisible? Like, is, is he invisible in any... Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's just like visibly an imp? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, Squeak begins to fly up. It's it's a, it's a ways up. Uh, and the further up he goes, the more he can feel the wind. Um, but uh, this is something that he can do uh, quite easily. Uh, it just takes him like a few minutes to actually get up there. And... Uh, um, by the time he's about at the at the height uh, of the lowest towers, uh, he's close enough to actually be able to see that uh, one of them, um, the uh, this one, the Fount of Knowledge, the library, uh, at the very top of it, there's something that wasn't there before. Um, he can see these. Uh, um, they look like vines. They are green, uh, thin and long, and they extend down from um, a section that's directly beneath beneath the roof. That is, like, open. Um, does he want to get closer? Um... Sure, yeah. He'll, he'll get closer and, and try and take a look in while Pip is watching through his eyes. Okay, yeah. He'll fly a little bit higher up until he reaches... It's, like, sort of like this... It is, uh, um... It's the top floor of the tower, um, and the roof is above it, but all around it's open. There's just pillars that actually hold up the rest of the roof. And uh, up here in this open space, uh, there it is overgrown with these enormous plants. Um, and the, the closer he gets to this area, and the more tired he feels, his... Um, it's almost, almost overwhelming. Um, and he knows that he absolutely cannot afford to lose consciousness yeah. this high up in the air. But uh, <laughs> yeah, even people was like slightly to feel like almost like he was about to, to doze off. Uh, and during the minutes when, when Squeak is, is gone, um, as the, the, the gnome just points at that little thing that just flew from, from Pip's scarf and up in the air and just says, whoa, whoa, whoa what is that? What is that? <laughs> As Squeak reappears on Pip's shoulder, uh, he looks over towards the gnome, turns back into a rat, and then says, no one will believe you. <laughs> <laughs> did, you see any, did you see any people awake up there? Maybe up high, they'd be out of the... Uh, of no, but uh, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> what what I did see is there's there's this really big plant growth up there, just vines coming out of that that tower. I think it's is that the the, the library? 
Yeah. Yeah, the fount of knowledge. <laughs> that certainly wasn't there before. A pontifex will confirm that there is, uh, um, uh, plants are strictly forbidden in the fount of knowledge. <laughs> Professor, did you did you try growing your spore plants? Did he try doing what? In the restricted section. <laughs> he was studying the, the sporophytes. That um, was the last thing he did in the library. Yeah, the um, the uh, the ferns. Yes. Uh, That's upon... the wizard school, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I Dang pontifex. college kids in their weed. <laughs> pontifex rules were up and down and all he needed was research. He just read some books. Okay. I guess that's where we look. Right? Yeah. First thing to check is something different. Oh. Uh, uh, how are you planning on getting up there? Does the lift still work? Lift? It's a stairs. It's an invisible one that turn visible. There's invisible stairs? Okay, show me. Yeah, come oh. with us. Let's go. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, I, I'm sure I don't need to tell you this, but we need to be fast. Or, you know, it will get to you. Where were oh. you when your patrol went went bed, bed by? We were in one of the inns. Uh, the awesome possum. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and everyone fell asleep except you? Well, uh, it was during the night. I woke up and everyone else was sleeping, which was really weird for my troop. And uh, then I realized the, the 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 innkeeper was asleep, and out the door, everyone in the in the streets. Uh, well, some people were still conscious, but it eventually got to them too. So hmm. she seems like totally awake. Ah, uh, yeah. Whatever, we don't have time for that. <laughs> we'll unpack that later. <laughs> um, okay. You stand... Uh, um, you stand in the closest spot um, beneath the Fount of Knowledge. Escalatorium, yes. Um, <laughs> yes, where the Escalatorium reaches down. <laughs> and, well, you've, you've done this once. Ah, some of you have done this more than once, but uh, now you understand how it works. Um, one of you, probably many among you, um, just like think about wanting to get up to the tower, and sure enough, the the lights begin to to collect and float downward and form in uh, the shape of a staircase. As the gnome that's wi with you gasps in surprise and says, "Okay, tell you what, um." Once I'm done with the, uh, with all this stuff, maybe I'd like to leave, uh, visit Elven cities more often. That's cool. Yeah. Sure. Okay, let's go upstairs. <laughs> it takes about a minute for the entire uh, is 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 culture is. <laughs> Hold on. Escalatorum. <laughs> uh, to extend all the way downward, then you step on it and you hold tightly on the handrail, and it begins to retract back uh, into the library. The gnome coming with you. Um, and you're like, for this group, you are uncomfortably close to a gnome, uh, even though you're, you're keeping plenty of feet of distance, but uh, she's armed with a rifle and you just you just don't like it. Push her off right now. <laughs> Alex is going to keep his eye on the professor to make sure nothing crazy happens. Yeah, no man to woman? Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> um, and during the awkwardly long wait uh, as the Skeletorum br brings you up uh, to, to, uh, to the library, she will clear her throat and she will say, <clears throat> uh, can I have your names? You know, in case you don't make it, maybe I can find your family or something. 
<laughs> They're dead. Oh <laughs> shit, I'm sorry. I d didn't... Oh. Oh shit. <laughs> All family. of families. <laughs> <laughs> All of them? <laughs> wow. He is not telling the truth. Oh. But there's you know no what? I retract my offer. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's your name? My name's Talix Moyer. Well, you can just call me Gran. Gran? Me? No, just... It's Grangina. Oh, Greninja, okay. No. <laughs> Genji. Ren, okay. <laughs> Greninja. <laughs> you know, I have a meme for this. I'll share it later. <laughs> um, okay. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Yep, yeah, right here. Just a few days ago, you were hidden between the walls of this very same library, but now as you step in, you almost fail to recognize it. You notice right away the difference in smell. The musty odor of yellowed pages has been overcome by something that reminds you of the outdoors, as if you were still traveling through the hills west of Simlielon. This area is uh, empty for the most part, only a few scholars slumped on their tables or on the floor. Uh, to your right, Acorn, is, cur is curled up in his miniature chair, his wings shivering with each breath. Uh, to your left, the stairs leading to the upper floors are blocked by large, green, slimy roots. They cover most of the floor ahead of you, stretching across the library like giant snakes. And as you look at them, you see them pulsating, and you can hear the occasional drop of the viscous coating hitting the wooden floor. Uh. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so, small note, I'm gonna kidnap Pip for a moment. What? Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> so the, the hitbox of this thing is off, but I have found a weird way of fixing it. So I'm just stalling because I need to wait like 10 seconds, and then I'll rewind the time, and it will be fixed. It's weird! <laughs> <laughs> but it works! I love that. So, it might interrupt the music. Uh, but then it should be good. Okay, try placing your minis here in front of the door. Yes! Okay, it's fixed. <laughs> Alright! Uh, I, I think it works if I reload it in any way. Probably saving would do it. Uh, but yeah. And uh, we're going Our to... Our grid is the wrong size right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and there you go. Professor? And I'm, Professor I'm appears. I'm guessing you don't want me to burn this whole library down. No! <laughs> I was thinking, as shameful as it might be, that would probably be the quickest way to make sure that everything in here died. Well... Mm -hmm. I have to evacuate the people first, of course. <laughs> Otherwise, does anyone have anything to kill plants? Uh. In a quick way. I got this. As uh, Grungina walks up to the nearest. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> to the nearest the set of uh, roots. <laughs> uh, no, she pulls a small sword from from the scabbard and just slashes down. And these things are kind of... They're pretty tough. But the, she just uh, almost like hammering them. One, two, three to cut. Uh, digging in deeper until finally she severs it. And goes, ta-da! And you watch as uh, it immediately rejoins together. In front of your eyes. She turns back and sees that all, all her work has been undone. And grunts, annoyed. Okay, maybe right. something else. Alright, I've got an idea. <laughs> turns back into an imp. And uh, brandishes his tail. 
uh, his little scorpion-like tail and says, Maybe we can poison it. Send all my poison throughout its whole root system. Eh? How long does your poison take? It's just a stinger. Just stick it and then, then you know, it, it splurge it in there, you know? And it immediately it, dies? It really... What? <laughs> oh, go ahead, give it a shot. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> He'll uh, land on one of the roots and and stick his stinger into it. You know what? You're right. Nobody will believe this. <laughs> and um, you'll watch as uh, <clears throat> Squeak's tail um, manages to um, uh, sort of like a little needle just get inside uh, uh, beneath the the outer part uh, of these roots. And uh, uh, you wait, and you see that the the wet coating that covers this thing um, begins to turn green from the spot from the spot where um, from uh, from the spot where uh, a squeak poisoned it. It's poison, yeah, poison damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. It feels... Oh god. Can I have medicine checks from everyone watching? Plant medicine. Plant mm. medicine. Um, for most of you watching, uh, Pip is too busy paying, uh, just uh, keeping an eye on the gnome. Um, it feels like the poison did something, um, but you can also see that over time, uh, whatever has been, the damage that's been done to the root, the part where it started to rot, um, it just begins to heal up, just like when, when Grangina had cut it down. Uh, although the... The, the coating on the root remains that uh, strange green color. Um, uh, it, Talix would have had in his studies of nature back in Ladaria um, encountered some uh, creatures, never plants before, but some creatures with uh, just natural uh, regenerating abilities, um, magical animals of the rare kind that uh, really only, almost ex ex exclusively live uh, in Elin Arden. And uh, um, generally with them it takes, it takes something that uh, the creature is uh, uh, particularly weak against in order to, to pause uh, that, uh, that regeneration effect. It just feels um, just like it. I have an idea. Brooke, can yes. you can you try to sever the vine right where he struck with your swords? And then afterwards, Professor, I know you have some... Pretty sure you have some fire magic that you can use at will. Maybe try to burn, you know, cauterize where the cut was. What? Pontifex refused to use magic and uh, fire in the library. I feel like that would be a concern of this. Like, if it's on the level of fire bolts, it has no risk of burning surrounding things. Ah, uh, is that like part of its description? I'm pretty sure it explicitly says it doesn't ignite things. I might be making that up though. A flammable object hit by this spell ignites if it isn't worn or carried. Oh, okay, never mind. We'll contain the fire. Just <laughs> can, I make, can right. I make a persuasion mm. check? <laughs> <clears throat> All right. As a professor doesn't do it, does anyone else has any fire? Yeah, yeah I, I <laughs> do. I, I mean, I can, I can set this whole, this whole place on fire. And what you if, no. what if we, what if we throw the bookcases down the, 
the escalatorium and then set everything on fire. Okay, do that, we have some time for that? We've got people in here. Okay, let's we'll start small. We'll get information first. Cut it, and Pip, you just burn at the spot where the cut is. We'll see what that does, and then we'll go from there. Okay. okay. I'll swing. Okay. Um, Brooke, after a few precise uh, swings, uh, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you severed the root. And simultaneously, Pip, uh, what what are you casting? Pip uh, points his left index finger forward, and that metal ring uh, glows with some green sparks, and he casts Create Bonfire right where he oh. sliced. So make uh, da, 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 the nice, a nice flammable object in this area that would be more carried. Okay. Um, you're doing this, let's say, like somewhere around here. Um, trying to keep it away from uh, the stairs and the carpet and the bookshelves. Um, and as uh, Brooke severs uh, the root and uh, Pip simultaneously sets it on fire, you can see that uh, the coating on these roots. Uh, begins to take on a red color. Um, it doesn't overcome uh, the green that was already there, um, but you see it shimmering between the green and red. Um, a few seconds afterwards, it, it begins to grow back. All the damage undone. Whoa. That's one tough plant. Is there, are the whole stairs covered? Uh, yeah, it's like the entire opening, and you can't even see past it. There's like multiple layers of vines. It, it feels I... very deliberate. Okay. So these are all roots. Yeah, yeah. They're root-like things. Can I try to surmise if this is actually where the plants began its growth um does it look like this is like the the tail end of everything you know uh, for Talix I wouldn't really I wouldn't even ask for a roll um this feels like the end of it yes uh and you can see looking further down the library that uh, they, it actually gets thicker the further down which would suggest that uh, um that would be the direction where it started growing first Further down. Further, yeah, into the library. Not uh, not up the stairs, but directly ahead of you. All right, so Alex will just start moving forward. Um, I'll. Grinjin is momentarily is... distracted by the tiny fairy on the tiny chair. Just. Out of curiosity, I will go ahead and grasp my ember in one hand, my staff in the other. I guess I'll put my shield back. Um, and cast Shlele. Okay, and are you putting out the just... fire that Pip started? Is, does it look like it's about to spread? It's fire on the ground. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily it's, mean that it's going to spread. <laughs> it is definitely is it going to catch the floor soon. Okay. Well, yeah, Which is made of wood. will drop concentration. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's concentration, all right. It is, yeah. Okay. Lasts for a minute. The floor is definitely just scorched now in that area, and Pontifex seems hurt. Uh, so, yeah, if I, if I give it a whack, does anything... Does it respond in any way? A whack to the to the roots? Yeah. No. Okay. I'm gonna just start climbing up over stuff and try to make my way in. Hey Tekka. Hmm. Yes. You still got that saw? <laughs> <laughs> it will not be enough. Oh no. <laughs> <clears throat> Can I, I get these people out 
you find a solution. Can I slash the big thing, well, the big vines or plant on the stair to see if it's like thick behind it or if they're yeah. just like a... Yeah, yeah. You, you get to work slashing and swinging and just cutting and cutting and cutting and it, it feels like you're just digging through layers of vines uh, and even as you like get past the first layer and you begin to work on the second uh, the first one begins to regrow in front of you and eventually blocks you off again it's happening faster than you can destroy it It seems like the growth has started this way. Are you sure? Uh, well, it's very strange in any case. But best I can guess, it was planted this way. Atalix, as you move forward, you can see that the, the, the coating that's sort of like rippling uh, across the roots, it feels like it's getting carried in the direction you're going, and um, you're basically traveling with the waves of colors that uh, uh, that Pip and Squeak have created, and so that uh, that color is reaching f forward um, to where you're going, and then to the right. Something's definitely flowing this way. So I was going to do his best to not touch the roots when, not, when at all possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're trying to like walk around them. Um, yeah, watching I where think you we'll follow him. And, uh, yeah? Tekka, we can, all, we can all help you get the people out, but we might need you up here. If there is no way, we will have to light this place life above knowledge yeah but it doesn't look like the fire is doing much to it professor you've got all sorts of uh, tools at your disposal can you try to figure out what this thing might be weak to You're speaking and you're muted. Oh, you're right. Thank you. Um, yeah, Pontifex approaches. And as the three of you turn around this corner, you can see that definitely this area is the part where it's just the most overgrown. Uh, you can't even see the, the back of the wall or any of the shelves directly to the right and left of this little corner. Um, and as Pontifex steps forward to get to um, start examining uh, what this is and starts thinking about what... Uh, um, but he has this disposal to get rid of it. Um, you all notice that uh, the the roots, the, the vines in this area are moving slightly at first and then uh, um, they whip the air uh, and they begin to sort of like slither towards you. And you all can roll initiative. Great, oh, we snappers. can't even hurt this thing. <laughs> Hmm. Maybe we're not supposed to hurt him. Maybe we're supposed to teach it love. <laughs> this is Eberron. Oh. <laughs> God damn it. Natural ones, let's go. Me too. <laughs> I take it back. Maybe this is Eberron. Teach it love. <laughs> there we go. Oh no. <laughs> Truly, the professor, though, um, if it's minus three to initiative. Minus come on, three. Come on, squeak. Come on, squeak. Here, do you want to roll it? All right. I don't know if it'll be weird if I do. No, I'm also. Yeah! Affected by this. <laughs> wow. Yes. Oh, yep. 
I mean, we're all kind of like sluggish, you know, from the magic <laughs> happening here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would be very grateful if one of you um, could act for Pontifex. Do we have his character sheet? Uh, it's in the same other. campaign, yeah, as the rest of uh, you. But... These are a lot of spells. Uh, uh, but Why does he one? know like 50 spells? How is Multiclass. that possible? Um, I, I'm the only one who can actually mark off spells, so though. Ugh, I'll do it. It's fine, I'll do it. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, I'm missing... Talix. Oh, and I'm missing... Uh... Oh, oh wait, no. sorry, I forgot to put it You're on. All yeah. Holy crap, that is a lot of spells. What the heck? Does he... Maybe he prepares them on paper or something. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's just... He knows... Uh, um... The number of spells unknown. Uh, yeah, I haven't prepared the spells for today. I mean, I don't, I don't know what he would do. I just left him as they were. But yeah, he knows a lot of spells because he's a multi-class, so he gets to know like the things from both classes. Like, knowledge oh, of spells dang. is cumulative. Spells <laughs> loss is not. That's a lot of spells. Refresh. Uh, hey, I'm Matt, still... you got a lot of spells. <laughs> I'm still missing Talix. From the track. Wait, I, no. I said it. Oh, oh okay. I it wasn't changing a thing. Thank you. Did it start from round. <coughs> okay, round one. Okay. Um. Well, Pip, uh, Squeak can hear just uh, Pontifex kind of grasping, gasping in surprise, and like this whipping noise. Uh, um, coming from around the corner. Uh, hey, what's going on? Alive! <laughs> oh, you cut out All a little right. bit, but he said it's alive. <laughs> uh, Squeak will... <laughs> um... Oh, uh, Squeak will turn back into a... Nope. Uh... Squeak will hold the move action for whenever Pip wants him to move. Okay. Oh, music. Forgot. All right. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, my whiteboard. I can't forget my whiteboard. <laughs> uh, okay, here it is. So, um, the. These are these roots that are moving almost feel like uh, uh, like tendrils, just extensions of the plant that uh, somehow have the, the, the freedom and, and of movement and the strength uh, of uh, limbs. Um, you see them reaching forward um, towards uh, Pontifex, uh, who's AC 16? Uh, 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 I don't know. No, yes, <laughs> it is. 16. <laughs> um, <laughs> and. Uh, he has the shield spell. I'm just going to liberally uh, make use of these. Um, so yeah, I'll be marking down one first level spell slot for him. Um, as uh, he just... He's taken a little bit by surprise, but reacts just in time for his magic to prevent this blow from actually affecting him. Um, and there's going to be another of these roots 
uh, that is also unable to break. This time it's just uh, just wasn't weak enough to even come close to hitting him. Uh, Talix. Uh, that is Does that kind prevent of him low. from casting another spell? Hmm? Does that prevent him from casting another spell? Uh, just a, another reaction for the round. Oh. He can so cast not, a spell on his turn. That's not subjected to the two spells per round thing? That's correct. Okay. Um... What was I doing? Oh yeah, I was rolling for Talix. Um, which is this much. Um, a 13? This is... Okay. And then another one, still a Talix. <laughs> 12! Nothing! Um, and you could see as he tried to reach for you, and he sort of like took cover behind the Pontifex, uh, whose magic uh, uh, is uh, just keeping all of his attacks at bay. Um, you could see that each of the tendrils had, was just pulsating with this green and red and green and red light. Um, that feels almost like it's uh, it's powering it up, but it's still slow enough that uh, it hasn't managed to hurt you. Uh, Talix. Your turn. Talix is going to put away his stick because it's going to be useless and get out of shield. Um, so what does that take? Is that bonus action or action? He's putting away the stick and getting the shield out? Yeah. Your, um, your interaction, the other interaction is sufficient. Okay. Um... Let's just see what this would do. Uh, he's going to go ahead and cast Spike Growth on this whole area. Just going to be a bunch of spiky thorns sprouting out of the wood from the bookshelves and everything. Uh, it, it would hamper its movements if that matters, but otherwise it's just going to damage it every round. Or, oh, wait, moves. no, it's only when it moves. Oh, that's useless. Never mind, sorry. That's All fine. Right. He's just, he's just going to cast uh, Sanctuary on himself. Okay. Anything else on Talix's turn? That's it for now. Tekka? Uh, yes, I imagine Tekka was like... Uh, finishing with uh, getting one of the scholars out the door and hearing everyone shouting for it into the library uh, he'll start walking with uh, controlled breaths right into the library and stop about there that's his turn okay um Regina hearing the, the, the commotion um, she's uh, very extra, uh, so, okay, um, uh, so she leaps onto the back of the chair and then onto the bookshelf, uh, and she'll take a look at the situation from above, just using her action to get up here, um. She's a tabaxi! <laughs> <laughs> what, what's going on? Oh, yeah, that looks, hmm, yeah, you want me to shoot it? Worth a shot! Alright! <laughs> and you see her start loading a bullet into the rifle. A brook! It's a silver rifle. She's like <laughs> taking out the little package of powder, <laughs> stuffing a ball and pouring it in, taking Cleaning out a rifle. Yeah. <laughs> I used her action for an acrobatics check to jump on the shelf. <laughs> how far can I get? Like, how close to the main thing can I get? Uh, all the way to this mini, all the way here. Cool. That's not difficult terrain. 10. I know. 20. There's a uh, sufficient space to actually move around. All right. Doing the most efficient slashing myself as a bonus action to activate a Crimson Rider. That's... 
this much damage. Ooh. It's fine, it's fine. And then I will do an attack. A 23 That's hits. A... Cool, cool. All right, first one is uh, uh, radiant damage, I think. So, 12 normal and 1 radiant damage. <clears throat> okay, noted. Um, and as you bring your sword from above down onto this bundle of, of growth, um, that just f it feels... It feels natural, it feels wrong, uh, it feels unhealthy. Um, you can see that uh, the... Your blow was successful, uh, but you've also seen uh, uh, what this plant can do, uh, so you're keeping an eye on that wound uh, to see what happens to it. Anything else in your turn? Nope, that's bonus and normal action, so I'm done. Okay, Pip. Uh, okay. Um, uh, brr, uh, Pip is going to try and cast Hex on the roots of this plant creature. Hex, Hex, Hex. You place a curse on a creature you can see. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, yep, yeah, that takes, that takes hold. We'll give it disadvantage on constitution checks? <laughs> Is it a question? Uh, nope. I'm. Uh, that'll. Uh, yeah, Constitution checks. And uh, <clears throat> then is going to to stand uh, right next to the roots and say, "Tekka, the saw," and will hold his <laughs> hand out and hold his action to attack. <laughs> Now's the time. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, no sits here. <laughs> uh, can I make a uh, suggestion? Please. I think the professor should try to suss out what this thing can actually be hurt by. Oh yeah, uh, what you like were requesting what we originally. Tried before hasn't. Uh, um, can he try chromatic orb with cold damage? It seems logical. Chromatic orb with cold damage. Okay, sure. Uh, he'll give it a go. He was like momentarily distracted by the books on the shelf uh, and he was like almost about to wonder if maybe there was something in there about this plant. But then uh, yeah, he brings back his attention, sees Brooke attacking <laughs> and he just says, Oh, I, I have the thing for this. And he... <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll cast Chromatic Orb. I'll mark down the spell slot and... Uh, uh, Probably you... just first level until we figure out something mm -hmm. that actually works. You can choose from these types, make a range to spell attack. Uh, he gets Chromatic Orb from being a wizard, so his spell attack is plus six. Oh wait, I should, I should roll it from his thing. Six. A twenty-two will hit, and it is three uh, D eight. Yep. Wonderful. Of the chosen damage type, which is in this case is cold. Um, oh it's going my. To, Oh damn! It's going to be this little burst of ice. Uh, the little ice spikes dress, just driving themselves into the plant and kind of uh, pinning some of its moving tentacles in place. Um, it seems to uh, take the full extent of the damage, but you also see that coating around it um, shine with an additional bright blue glow. Uh, 
So currently we have green, red, and blue. And the damage was 17. Available to him as bonus actions. Uh, oh, nothing. Nothing that he can use. Um, so that will be him. Back to Squeak. Uh, okay. Squeak is going to... I'm trying to grab him. <laughs> He's kind of stuck in my my health bar. Eh. <laughs> what? Eh. He's stuck. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Squeak! Get off! <laughs> hold, hold, hold. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Squeak is going to fly up here. Uh, next to uh, Gringina. Uh, look down, assess the situation. Let's see, how much movement was that? 40? Yeah, that's all of his flying <coughs> speed. Um, um... Yeah, he'll hold the move action again. And that's it. Okay. Back to the plant. All right. Um, the its roots are going to start attacking again. <laughs> Brooke, that's a natural one on you. Misses. And, hey, I rolled above a 10. Uh, does a 21 hit? Yep. Okay. Now, I need a favor from Austin. Um, oh? As uh, one of these roots, fire, the first one misses, and then one finally slams into Brook. Um, and uh, he's covered uh, partially in that... Uh, his wound is covered in partially in, the, in, in that uh, slimy coating. And uh, uh, it's the green color. So could you Gosh, roll that it. poison damage from earlier from Squeak? Oh, no. <laughs> Uh-oh. Not a great roll, at least. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Brooke, you will be taking uh, eight poison damage in addition to uh, the actual damage, which I haven't hit yet, so I don't have dice out like a silly person. Here we go. Um, plus an additional seven bludgeoning damage. Got it. Um, then one attack upon... Does the target get the... Uh get a saving throw against that damage uh it's it just comes with the uh, successful attack oh, okay so it's just against That's the armor just sort class of damage you dealt it against it all right mm -hmm. um so for pontifex huh? now i'm on a roll uh also above a 20 to hit which shield cannot help against um so, uh, still Austin, I'll also need the, the bonfire damage. Um, <laughs> the vines reach forward. These ones, like, almost come from beneath your feet uh, and grab onto Pontifex, and he feels this burning sensation as the red coating inflicts seven fire damage. I'm uh -oh. helping, guys. <laughs> seven fire damage in addition to... Um... Six bludgeoning. And one, two, three, fourth attack. Uh, upon Talix. <laughs> Didn't I it just roll a code. natural one? God damn it. Mm -hmm. okay. I tried to make a wisdom save anyway. Oh, that's right! That's right, that's right, that's right. Um, oh. I, I don't know what its wisdom is, but I think it passes. Um... What happens when he passes? He just continues with it. Just continues yeah. with the attack. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the reminder. Um. 
yeah, yell at me. Um, but even as uh, yeah, even as your 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 protection fails you, um, it seems to like slow it down just enough that you can very easily, very smoothly just sidestep it. Talix, your turn. Oh, sorry. Um, since it was the plant's turn, you also get to see in Brook you're, you're the first one to notice this. Um, as the wounds uh, upon the plant began to close, um, the part where you struck is still glowing with white radiant light and the wounds remain open. It does not regenerate. Oh. Uh, Talix, it's your turn. Okay, uh, Talix is going to move up behind Brook and uh, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds at second level. Let's go. And he's going to call out behind him. If there's anything you can do to stop that flow, Yeah, 14. No, 14. With flow, you mean... The flow of slime. Into me, or...? It's flowing. It, we're seeing ooze flow down the root okay. Okay. into this. And that seems to be... Just because there was also some slime inside me now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, although the all that's left is, is the blue colored uh, slime uh, the other colors have like just attached to to you guys with a with a hit and you know dripping on the floor by now all right that's all that's all Talix is doing okay Pekka. Pekka nods to pip pip you have a plan. Let us move. And uh, Tekka will attach the handsaw to the quarter staff. Begin sawing the roots. Is that an athletic check or how does that work? I don't know. Uh, both of you are working together? Yeah, Pip, is, Pip held his action, so he's going to like like grab on with Tekka and and they're both going to like be uh, grinding the the handsaw against the roots and I think with the two of you working together um, I would just ask for both of you to roll an athletics check but it, it will be very, very low uh, and also Matt says hi hi Matt he says the opening session is going well looks like I hoped in at a spooky time how does your feature work? How do you uh, give people extra attacks? What is that? Oh yeah! You target them the... with a spell, they can use a reaction to attack, I think. Works. Yeah, it's whenever it is a spell of a specific school of magic. Hot dang, Sid. Uh... Mine was what? not that good. <laughs> <laughs> the two the opposites. king of nat 20s. <laughs> And the king of Nat ones, apparently. As, as Tekka is is sliding, Pip is just sliding with it. <laughs> yeah. Like Pip is like in the air, both of his feet yeah. on the ground, just being ah, shaken vigorously ah, by ah, Tekka's insane. So. We're doing it. We're. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see if um, if Hex might do anything with this as well. Uh, oh, it's not a specific school. Sorry, continue. Uh, <laughs> if the if if it would add any necrotic damage or if that would help it or harm it in any way. Uh, okay, I'm just trying to decide how to resolve this uh, nat twenty nat one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna average them out. I think that still works. <laughs> There? Yeah. Um, okay. And the DC was going to be a 10, so it meets it exactly. 
Um, okay, so it will take you like the full round to just saw this uh, major piece of the roots off. Um, I guess we'll. Well, we'll get to it. Uh, is there anything else on Tekka's turn? No, focusing okay. on taking the root. Uh, Pip has a plan, apparently. So. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's Grangina's turn. Um, as she uh, has finished uh, balancing herself and loading a bullet uh, into the weapon and uh, uh, lays, lays down, uh, tries not to hit Squeak and uh, takes a shot and the loud booming noise that comes out of that weapon, it shakes, it rattles the shelves, uh, one chair falls over, some books fall out of the, of the shelves and uh, uh, it is a hit. The bullet strikes with such force that it passes through the uh, the plant and embeds itself uh, in the wall behind it, um, leaving scorch marks uh, in the in the hole that it has that it has created through the creature. Um, there was a lot of damage, and uh, again, Brooke will be able to see that it's. Uh, um, N not it's not closing up and now it's her turn mm. do I try to hit the same wound again or do I stop the slime the radiant energy from your previous uh, uh, blow is fizzling and going away you feel like it might need to be reapplied Okay. Then I strike the same spot again. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Oh no. <laughs> you know what? Yes. Let's oh. get the yeah. Hey. yeah. Uh. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um. My computer. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Oh, 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 yes. all right. All right, that's 26. <laughs> Three radiant and 10 normal. Well, slashing. Oh, uh, yeah. Da, da, da. Okay, uh, Brooke, how would you like to kill this plant? Ooh. Oh, 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 oh! Well, if there's already gap, he would probably take his katana and thrust it in, and then cut upwards, everything open. More or less dividing it in two. Yeah, uh, yeah. You cut it in two from from down up, um, and all the little all the little um, roots just drop to the ground. It they almost like severed uh, a snake uh, heads and uh, uh, right around for a few seconds, and then they stop moving. And the roots you're standing on uh, begin to to decay. Just uh, uh, you can see that happening with your naked eye uh, as they lose their coloration and uh, begin to turn into dust. <clears throat> All right, we should go upwards, right? Yeah, this might not be over. Tekka, we did it. Uh, yeah, you back here. <laughs> <laughs> your your saw managed to turn his entire thing to dust. We did it! <laughs> Can I just say that the shadow of my figurine looks scary as fuck? <laughs> um, like, a, 
like it looks like there's an actually an actual skeleton hovering <laughs> behind me. What? What is this? Look at memes and fun things. And I was moving it had like this little shimmer behind me. And it looks like a skeleton group. Oh, oh uh, yeah. yeah, when you oh, when what? you when you pick up a mini you can see like a a, a partially invisible version of where you're about to place it. Oh. And because oh, of nice. the way opacity oh, works. Oh, no. yeah. You've got multiple layers. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty scary. <laughs> Who is standing behind me and watching over me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, can you heal yourself? Um. Yeah, Pontifex is wounds? physically he, capable. No, wait, no, he does not have a cure. He, have he has healing. He has healing ward. Prepared. Out. Um, no, that's a waste. Okay, uh, but. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say Talix will cure wounds. What's yeah. up? I was just going to say, you can go ahead and do that. Um, and we might just stop the session slightly earlier today, after only three hours, uh, so that Matt can be here for the rest of the library. Yeah. Is that yeah. reasonable? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a library. He's got to be here. <laughs> Good plan. Fair Thank enough. You. Um... And yeah, the the way up uh, the stairwell um, is now free. And yeah, you can go ahead and roll the healing damage. The healing damage? One, two, <laughs> three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll set that on his Carter sheet too. And uh, uh, everybody pick up your mini. Shield of Faith lasts 10 minutes, right? It's not actually Shield of Faith, it's Sanctuary. Uh, oh, it's like Sanctuary, you're right, sorry. Uh, but it's one minute. One minute, okay. Uh, that 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 will not be enough to actually carry over the next it's only battle. Been like, it's only been like twelve seconds. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, if you're like, we'll see. yeah, sure. I'm if you're immediately going stairs. to. <laughs> <laughs> no time, no waste. Yeah, yeah, we are upstairs. Yoink. Uh, Why did you yoink into your we're space? We're gonna find out that it was actually a native Ladarian again when we killed it. <laughs> um, the, the blend? Yeah, well, what? that's the trend. <laughs> I'm just going to like show you uh, the second floor. Ooh. Uh, and it's not. Uh, sorry, hold on. I should describe it. Uh, so as you run up the stairs, there will be a couple of floors that are clear. Um, there's besides a few people that are that uh, are uh, that are yeah. around that are like, yeah. not dead yet. Um, there is there are no plants or any any intruders, anything that's particularly off. Um, and you pass a couple of sections where uh, the the doors are locked, uh, and you know that uh, uh, Pontifex and the and Talix note as well, some sections of the library are only meant for access to uh, certain people. Um, Pontifex, being a mem member of the Order, describes uh, he actually has the most uh, access to like almost the entirety of the tower. Uh, but it still requires like Acorn to actually go and open these doors for him. Uh, so you're just going up the stairs uh, for most of it until you find a section uh, that uh, where the door has just been burst open and you can see the, sta the stairs leading up to the floors above are still blocked again but the same kind of plant uh, that seems to have grown from somewhere within and we'll I'm pick just, up from this area I'm just gonna call that Sasuke did this oh mm. on his way okay. to the train it's like you know it's Let's His name is Saskarin. Sasuke. Sas. Sasuke Greninja. Okay. Okay. Uh, I hope you These had maps fun. These are beautiful. Ooh. Yeah. I'm. I'm glad. Well, um, good. It, it, These people are totally <laughs> going to die. No, we're going to save them all. Well, 
you know, as you run further up the stairs, you do feel that like it's getting, um, it's easier for you to just feel out of breath uh, and you're starting to just feel this, so, like it would be really nice to take a nap right now. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Tekka, you always feel like that, but now especially. Mm -hmm. you, you never realize just how cozy a library just could be. <gasps> uh, all right, and I'm going to call the session here. So thank you for playing with me today. Um, this is great. Mm. <laughs> yeah, what a spooky revelation! It was going to be a time for celebration, <laughs> and then this happened. <laughs> and I will see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 See ya. Boop. And we are offline. Who did this? It was Sasuke. Is. He's a he's a druid. He obviously did it. He's but got his why? fingerprints all over it. <laughs> he's a druid now. I can't get to that tree. Wait. I will grow my own tree. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> as we've as we've been going through here, does it look like people were like trying to run away, then fell asleep, or does it look like? Like, are people still sitting in chairs? Where They're still sitting unaware? in chairs. They're asleep Whoa. on open books. So the spores came before the roots did. Sounds like. Probably, yeah. It's feeding off of their energy. It's the Matrix. They're all dreamwalking right now. All their <laughs> life force is being... Oh, man. Stopped. I want to watch that movie again. What's the deal with with Gringina? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, she's. We're gonna find out that she's just a plant. <laughs> as in a spy <laughs> or as in like a that? literal plant? She's half plant. She I'm takes off her hat and there's just like this big flower. <laughs> I'm gonna say, if she lied to us, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> that was a well-deserved net 20. <laughs> oh, right. Big, oh, right, yeah, yeah. Because like, it's such a... Yeah, she sense. better be a good egg. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was such a fun role dichotomy for us, Sid. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. Oh, that worked out. I can't believe it. <laughs> Sid... Please I did. Hear that animation thing, that lovely animatic thing that you made. It's it, yes, it needs uh, to be immortalized. Immortalized. <laughs> uh, there's one little Easter egg, by the way. I only told Dennis about this. I don't know if anyone caught it, but uh, I made a cover of the Tekka track from last session. <gasps> what? Oh, what? That's the music. I oh my goodness! Ah. <sighs> yeah, I actually sad. had a moment where I was like, I wonder, I wonder what music this is. Like, you <laughs> did this in a week? <laughs> a it week? A few days, even, because like we only decided on what we were doing, well, like Wednesday. <laughs> uh, I, I did start before then, but I also was not at home during the weekend, so. Yeah, it was a few days. Oh my goodness. Oh, unbelievable. Sid, you are crazy. <laughs> All right, y'all, we need to pick up our game. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sid, Sid, didn't get, Sid didn't get the downward spiral memo. <laughs> he's, keep, he's been still going up. I, I mean, the last one I did was just a text recap. I did nothing for the last one I did. <laughs> uh... What am I gonna do? Mm. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a recap. It's pretty simple. We like the first hour of the session was the recap. All right, time for that rock opera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just have to say, how long 
How long did it take to place all these roots? Because it looks like it's only one model, but it looks so natural the way you placed it. It's great. Oh, yeah, they're trees, aren't they? Uh, yeah, mm. they are recolored uh, trees. Yeah. Um, it, it works so well. I'm really impressed. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, this, I, this, I... this particular model was very annoying to work with because oh. uh, it, it would, like, try to stick to a particular rotation. And so oh, I just would no. lock them one oh. by one and rotate them and position them. Was... Oh. You didn't have to recolor the texture itself, right? You can just... Um... What did I do? Let me see. Like it's a transparent texture? Uh, no, I just I, I just colored the model. Yeah. For some things it works, for other things it doesn't. And, right. But sometimes I have recolored the texture of the wall. Like the outer I, one. Oh, cool. And... I, I can confirm that making these maps on TTS takes forever, so good job. Props to you. I I spent like half an hour looking for a candle because these candles are fine, but like they're actually really big. And when you scale them all the way down, the fire <laughs> yeah. effect doesn't scale. Uh, <laughs> so I looked for a different one and I couldn't find a different one. Like there were others, but they weren't lit. And I wanted the lighting effect. It's nice. The shadows are nice. They're magical candles now. Yes. They're... Yeah. I mean, they are magical. Candles. They are magical candles to begin with, because otherwise the scribes would never allow <laughs> like actual fire in here. That makes but, sense. Yeah. yeah. Wait. So they're all magical flame, like eternally flickering. I'm gonna, t I'm gonna steal one. They can be turned <laughs> off and on, and yes. What? They have a switch. Um. Well, you have to put well. another one under it until it burns out. <laughs> 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 There's just no more candles. I can't find the meme. I know I have a meme. What about the name? Yeah. Brooke, Ooh. that was a sad backstory. <laughs> it's fine. Are we good. We got a new family now, right? Y y yeah. <coughs> None of you would leave me. Yeah. Uh, well, you see, oh. there's a place. <laughs> Tech has already left for it. <laughs> we get to the top floor. <laughs> He's gone. That's why he was trying to get out of the library earlier. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get the people out. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I love this campaign. <gasps> it's so, so good! Aww. We, sh we should have just, like, unhooked whatever this tower is connected to and just sent it. Let know, it fall. Flying into the sea. All of your suggestions would make Pontifex very sad. <laughs> We should take the tower and push it somewhere else. Yeah. Wait, if we send it up to the sky, would the dragons get mad and, like, destroy it? Or what would happen? That's fine. It's their domain. Uh, I guess we'll find out. We take it as a sign of aggression? <gasps> oh. Maybe so. Maybe they'll, uh, you know, start throwing... Rocks down on us in retaliation. Yes! Yes! <laughs> okay, I... by rocks I mean like big boulders. Rocks fall. The entire moon. The entire continent. The... Oh wow. It's Majora's Mask Muriel, now. Muriel. Yeah. <laughs> but with two moons. Oh. <laughs> okay! I think there's a Majora's Mask mod for that. <laughs> All right, I will let you go. Bye, everyone. Uh, thank Goodbye. you. See you next week. Yeah, thanks for playing. Oh, thank you for having everything.